It's that time of year, the Steam Summer Sale. And of course, there's cheap games left and right. It's the perfect time to pick up some games that you may not have heard of before. And for this time around, I'm going to highlight them in specific genre groups. This video is focused on action and adventure games. And these are the deals that specifically popped out to me when going through my massive list of games I've streamed and played. First up is Spiritfarer, 67% off for $9.89. This is on my infamous, I really want to review this one day list, which that list has now grown to over 75 games. Regardless, the fact that you can get this game for less than $10 means that you should be getting it now. The story is heartfelt, with compelling characters that you're helping pass to the next life. And get the tissues out early here, because you will be moved by several of these fascinating characters. To the point where you sort of don't want to help them pass on, because you won't be able to talk to them again. A lot of the complaints against it is that it is grindy, but to me, that feels purposeful. You have to grind to help these characters. You have to really earn the upgrades to explore new areas to get new materials to help them move along. And I think that the gameplay's tasks do enough to change things up from moment to moment to keep you interested, but again, having to earn it. Look, the fact is that this is probably one of the games that has lingered in my head for months afterward. And whenever you get a game like that, it's definitely worth your time and money. Second on the list is Gato Roboto, 70% off for $239. This is a great infection vector for players who want to be introduced to some of the basics of the metroidvania genre in a simple yet straightforward way. Yes, the game is charming with its cat protagonist in a mech suit. Yes, the game does a great job of keeping gameplay simple in its platforming and its combat straightforward, allowing new players to get accustomed to the style of metroidvania. It's two to three hours, which is a good length for the type of game that it is. Bosses are simple and straightforward, and the game's difficulty isn't really going to challenge you even if you're not a veteran of the genre. Yet, there's something satisfying here about blowing past enemies and using a missile jump to save a few seconds in your run for veterans. And the fact is, the best way I can describe this game overall is satisfying. Next up is Fight and Rage, 75% off for $4.99. With the beat em up genre getting the spotlight nowadays, with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, which is a good game by the way, and having several great games in Streets of Rage 4 and River City Girls lately, it's a good time to be a beat em up fan. Now, I've been a fan of all these releases. But if you ask me directly which beat em up I enjoyed the most in the last 10 years, I'd point to Fight and Rage. It's a challenging game that uses enemy variety and situational combos and skills to push you. And it's extremely satisfying when you get through a section while taking minimal damage. It's a great game to play with friends, whether it be via Steam Remote Play or local co-op, which helps the difficulty, especially as you're learning the game. There's a lot of replayability with multiple characters, branching storylines and levels, the different characters in terms of enemies, and my god there's a lot of content to unlock here. There's great level variety, taking pages out of the genre's past and crafting its own experience out of it. Even if the first time you play the game's draft section, you will be screaming at the top of your lungs in frustration. But seriously, if you like anything beat em up, Fight and Rage is exactly what you need. Moving on, we have Pumpkin Jack, 60% off for $11.99. It's been interesting to see the re-emergence of the 3D platformer over the last several years, especially in the indie scene. Pumpkin Jack does take you back to a simpler time, but I'm going to be honest here. There are better games in the genre from a level design and gameplay perspective. Pumpkin Jack is solid there, but there are better games like Demon Turf and A Hat in Time. And yet, something about Pumpkin Jack's charm help it transcend this status. 
it's got that atmosphere that makes me think I was actually playing a game from the PS1 and 64 era. While it's shorter than other games in the genre, it also doesn't overstay its welcome. Honestly, it's the perfect game I think to bring your child into 3D platformers, playing along with him. There's some good collectibles, different little mini games, and a really interesting adaptation of classical music into something spooky and atmospheric. Look, it's not gonna blow you away, but when you take into account that one person created it and the nostalgia it brings, it can definitely be worth a sale price. And yes, it's a lot easier to recommend than $30, but $12 for this? Fantastic. Next on the docket, Panzer Paladin, 50% off for $9.99. It's sort of fitting that Panzer Paladin is made by Tribute Games, because their game is a tribute to a lot of different games and popular media. But what's key here is that it pays tribute smartly, as the game wisely integrates games like Ninja Gaiden and Mega Man to make an interesting yet challenging experience that does make it stand out in the genre. It pushed me, but not to the point of breaking, and switching weapons every couple of enemies, trying to maximize their effectiveness, really works with the breaking weapon spell system. The controls are great, and yeah, it may have you dying a bit to get a handle of things, but quite frankly, it's sorta of expected for a game paying tribute like it is. The soundtrack is fantastic, and really feels like a tier below the classic Mega Man soundtracks, but only one tier below. It's the best example of a game that tries to be its own thing while reminding you of those classic games that you may have grown up with. At least for you older players out there, like me. Coming up next, Mushihimi-sama, 65% off for $6.99. It's a bit interesting to see the genre bullet hell be thrown on games that, in my opinion, are shmups, not bullet hell. If you want a bullet hell, Mushihimi-sama is it. And this is the easiest bullet hell to get into from the legendary cave developer. The clear hitboxes and stunning visuals that keep your attention on what's upcoming is a spectacle to look at, but doesn't get in the way of the information that's clear, concise, and to the point. And it's the reaction game of reaction games. Bombs and upgrades are good to give you options and help deal with the challenges ahead. And the music and sound design is pleasing, yet keeps your adrenaline pumping. Sure, it's repetitive, but it's a shmup. It's designed to be played over and over and over again to master it. And with the different difficulty settings and modes here, you'll be spending hours trying to get through sections and overcoming things. If you want a challenge, this game is for you. Falling from the sky, it's Songbird Symphony, 85% off for $2.54. A game as charming as Songbird Symphony can easily be overlooked as just a casual experience for those looking for something to bring up their spirits. I mean, it's a story about a young bird coming of age and finding out who he is, and it's charm personified, sold by cheery animations and great characterization of birds using stereotypes that you would expect of the bird types. The color and drawing style add a lot of life to the game and makes you want to see the next open world animation. But what may surprise you is that the rhythm gameplay isn't something to shake a stick at either. Granted, it's not a hardcore experience, and those veterans of the genre may be taken aback by the change in not only the speed of notes coming in at times, but the changing of the playing area and how those notes come in. It keeps you on your toes, and the game's focus on keeping the rhythm, the sole element to keep your ear on, is great. It may not be the most intense game, but it's the chill type of game that will put a smile to your face. Eighth on the list, it's Phenotopia Awakening, 50% off for $9.99. It's not flashy when it comes to its trailer. Its art style is good, but not eye appealing. And its first impression of gameplay doesn't seem to pop compared to other games. But I'm here to say that would be a mistake to overlook it. Because Phenotopia Awakening 
is a game that understands how to assemble a series of mechanics together to make an alternative yet fantastic experience that will reward players who adapt to the game's mechanics. The dash having a real momentum really ups the challenge of both platforming and combat, and sub-weapons actually have strengths and weaknesses to make them actually sub-weapons and not abusable. Combat can be tricky if you try to fight recklessly, and the game rewards you for using your mind rather than your reflexes in many cases, which is really nice to see. Combine that with a great variety of different puzzles and combat scenarios, and you have a game that you can really bite into. The story does well in highlighting the world and not making it all about the protagonist, but actually feeling like she's a part of a huge adventure that happens in conjunction with other stories. It's a game where you'll have to explore, find a side story, maybe do some grinding to get some money and food, and then figure out exactly where to go next. Give it a try, and you'll find a game that you'll want to see where it ends up taking you. Following up, it's Penko Park, 50% off for $6.49. It's easy to say that Penko Park is just an indie version of Pokemon Snap, but that would be really overshadowing it. There's a charm to reading about this world and looking at the beautiful environments and creatures that you see. The pacing of adding things to gameplay is great here. You aren't forced to really hefting the maximize runs in the early going, and the game gives new mechanics at the right times to keep you interested. The sound design really sells the creatures, and quite frankly, it's just a game that's adorable and yet somewhat relatable in dark. You'll want to find all the little secret things and find out what the history of the park is. And the quality of the pictures you take feeling like they're actually important in the progression system? Great! Really, the creature's designs, however, are the star of the show here, as the game's imagination is what keeps you wanting to see the next area and next set of items. So if you want a relaxing time that keeps you involved and maybe a little bit on edge, Penko Park is exactly what you need. Finally, we have Sunblaze, 70% off for $4.49. Sunblaze is one of those games that will hit well with a certain audience, those who love difficult platforming, and in particular, the rush of making it through levels quickly with simple yet refined controls. Good level variety helps in all the different types of difficulty that the game tests you on, on top of good visual indicators information-wise. The controls are the star here, feeling perfect for the game's different hazards while still punishing blatant mistakes. While it is following in the shadow of Celeste and can't compare to Celeste's storytelling and overall world design, the four to five hours to beat will keep you pushing you, but it has plenty of accessibility options that hit a gambit of small amounts of help to extreme amounts of help. At a sale price, this is a great entryway into a speedrunning type game. So if you're even slightly interested in the genre and how it will perform for you, Sunblaze is a perfect first game for that want. That's it for this video, but if you want to see more lists that are coming on this channel, hit that subscribe button or offer your opinions of action adventure games that people may have overlooked in the description below for this sale. Anyway, this is Dragonix signing out, and as always, keep on gaming.